we're going to trade the NBA.com. This is John's reports for the 6th, February. Well, we're continuing the checkout rise. Everything's clean from a DOC standpoint. We're starting to get a little extended here with the um, steel short-term buyers. So there's going to have to be some makeup. Of course, you had new fund money coming in, and that always helps propel. Plus, uh, there's no stopping that Fed liquidity. Uh, they've been terrified of the coronavirus stuff started throwing huge amounts of uh, capital to repo markets. And you see the net effect of that. The only place to get yield is right here and even still working today. Um, it'll be interesting when that comes to an end. That's going to really be a shock to the system and everyone. Uh, but for now, not the case. Uh, the NQ, likewise, looking strong. It's already had the fade off, though, of short-term buyers, interestingly enough. Um, I think you saw some of that uh, in a couple of stocks, particularly like the Teslas and these others, when they make big moves, they really um, affect those indexes simply because of what they are. Uh, the handle on the euro, getting a little bit harder to hold. Uh, <laughs> something we expected. We had the dip below the red line, so we knew we were gonna come back to this spot. Uh, the key now is, is it able to base here? and move forward. Is there actually any demand for euros? Uh, I don't know that there is. Oil. Um, they were so excited because it was an inventory draw and that caused a little boost, but uh, the damage here is pretty significant. I'm not expecting any kind of reversal to be dramatic. It would be tiny and kind of hold on. Um, and the weakness in gold is expressed there, but with that full reset, as soon as it gets above negative 13, um, should be able to hold its own and then move up some. Uh, if we scroll back for the day, there was some action back and forth. Uh, we pretty much just were still on the continued upside. I mean, we faded a little bit from the peak move of it, but um, overall, it was pretty good stuff. Um, the shorts really weren't producing a whole lot. Um, some of them gave some decent returns, but in general, you're going to get that when we're in this hyper bullishness. But as it starts to fade off a little bit, and I think we started to see that, that's why I was really more looking at uh, what's been happening here in the pre-market. I already had the huge run-up, so we still have a bunch of positive extremes. Um, the last set of them goes to right about here. Those were filled in on the last dip right before uh, we finished at the highs. And from there, we've continued, but then started to create them a little bit midway into the post-market. Um, right about here, which would put us uh, around the 33, 37 level, which we pretty much come back to retrace. Must have got a little line right there, so we will see it in the future. And uncharted territory. It's always fun. Love that. So we'll continue to just keep going with it. Um, no objections. Uh, take a look at the 50k while we're here. Bouncing over to the 50k. It took that small dip. Closed it out at 33.15 from 33.22. So it took just under the 100 points in total. So, eh, you know, it's a tough one, you know, there's always those, because we get these kind of soft things, most clear DOC on lower shakeout and everything, um, but I want to work with it a little bit more on this uh, reset of steel, because um, that happens more than a few times, but often you'll get this dip, another rise, but then it breaks down further, so... I'm not horribly upset with it. It's just one of those where um, we can see it and trying to convince the computer with all the little subtleties of it uh, is not as simple. I keep working at it. As always, though, if there's anything new and interesting, I will certainly put it up. Trade well. We'll talk to you later.